Over 60,000 living species are classified as fungi, and new ones are found each year. Until recently, all of these organisms were classified as part of the plant kingdom. However, fungi lack chlorophyll, and so are unable to make food by photosynthesis. Also, their cellular structure is quite different from plants, in that fungi are made up of thread-like hyphae. Each hypha may contain many nuclei, whereas plants generally have but one nucleus per cell. These are some of the reasons that many biologists prefer to place fungi into a kingdom of their own. Fungi obtain energy by digesting organic materials and then absorbing the digested products. The dark areas indicate where digestion of the fruit is taking place. After six days, the fungi have nearly completed the decomposition process, converting most of the fruit into fungal tissue and reproductive structures. The breakdown is accomplished by the hyphae, which secrete digestive enzymes into the surrounding environment. The digested nutrients are absorbed by the hyphae and distributed throughout the hyphal network. Once established, the mold will begin producing reproductive structures called sporangia. In this mold, the sporangia are held aloft by means of rigid hyphae. The slight elevation will aid in dispersing the numerous spores developing within each sporangium. The constant flow of materials to the sporangium suggests that fungi, like other life forms, pour their energies into reproduction. Under drying conditions, the sporangium will split open and release hundreds of airborne spores, each capable of beginning a new mold colony. The visible mushroom is but a short stage in the life cycle of these large basidiomycetes. For most of its life, the fungus exists in the soil as a tangled mass of hyphae called mycelium. Spreading through the moldering humus, secreting enzymes, digesting and absorbing the nutrients released, and undergoing sexual exchange of nuclei, the mycelium may exist for years before organizing into the spore-producing structure we call a mushroom. If a mushroom cap is sectioned, the spore-bearing areas can be seen lining the surface of the lamellae, or gills, as they are often called. The spores are produced on a club-shaped basidium, which is the spore-bearing structure which gives the group its name. When mature, the spores are fired into the air spaces between the gills and rain down for dispersal by wind. A spore print gives an idea of the vast number of spores which are produced in a six-hour period. the kingdom fungi, including the organisms which produce our antibiotics, useful food items with proper caution, agents of spoilage, and parasites. But far overshadowing these human interests, the fungi fill a vital niche in the ecology of our planet, the recycling through decomposition of nutrients in the living world. Thirteen point eight billion years ago it was the Big Bang. From that spark, the matter was jettisoned throughout the cosmos, and four point uh, five billion years ago the Earth coalesced. Most people don't realize, and scientists did not know until just recently, the first organisms on land were fungi. One point three billion years ago, six hundred million years later, plants arrived. 250 million years ago, at the border of the Permian and the Triassic period, there was a great cataclysmic event. Most scientists think it was an asteroid. Eruptions of volcanoes also occurred. And when this asteroid impact happened, the Earth became shrouded in dust. Sunlight was choked away from the uh, was choked away from the ground. And because there was no sunlight, huge numbers of species disappeared and became extinct. With all that debris that was created, fungi inherited the earth. 
the organisms that paired with fungi survived. We march forward again to 65 million years ago. Bam! Another asteroid impact. And fungi re-inherited the Earth. From these two asteroid collisions has steered the evolution of life on this planet. And we are in constant symbiosis with fungi. We now are experiencing 6X, the sixth greatest extinction on this planet that we have thus far have been able to, to be determined. And with the, over 50% of the species now estimated to become extinct in the next hundred years, we face a real problem. Not only for the, for the survival of the human species, but many other species that we carry with it. There are approximately one to two million species of fungi in the kingdom. About 150,000 of those are mushroom forming fungi. About 10% we have thus far identified, 14,000 species. So more than 90% of the species out there we have not even identified. And yet we're losing species, like, like rivets out of an airplane. How many rivets will you lose before we approach a point of catastrophic failure? Notice that as the mycelium grows, it conquers territory, and then it begins to net. I've been a scanning electron microscopist for many years. I have thousands of electron micrographs. And when I was staring at the mycelium, I realized that there are microfiltration membranes. We exhale carbon dioxide, so does mycelium. It inhales oxygen, just like we do. But these are essentially externalized stomachs and lungs and I present to you the concept that these are extended neurological membranes. And in these cavities, these micro cavities form, and as they fuse soils, they absorb water. These are little wells. And inside these wells, the microbial communities begin to form. And so the spongy soil not only resists erosion, but sets up a microbial universe that gives rise to, to a plurality of other organisms. I first proposed in the early 1990s that mycelium is Earth's natural internet. When you look at the mycelium, there are, they're highly branched. And if there's one branch that, that, that is broken, then very quickly, because of the nodes of crossing, internet engineers maybe call them hop points, there's alternative pathways for channeling nutrients and information. The mycelium is sentient, it knows that you are there, when you walk across landscapes, it leaps up in the aftermath of your footsteps trying to grab debris. So I believe the invention of the computer internet is an inevitable consequence of a previously proven biologically successful model. The Earth invented the computer internet for its own benefit, and we now, being the top organism on this planet, is trying to allocate resources in order to, to protect the biosphere. Going way out, dark matter conforms to the same mycelial archetype. I believe matter begets life. Life becomes single cells. Single cells become strings. Strings become chains. Chains network. And this is the paradigm that we see throughout the universe. Most of you may not know that fungi were the first organisms to come to land. They came to land 1.3 billion years ago and plants followed several hundred million years later. How is that possible? It's possible because the mycelium produces oxalic acids and many other acids and enzymes, pockmarking rock and grabbing calcium and other minerals and forming calcium oxalates. Makes the rocks crumble in the first step in the generation of soil. So these are absolutely essential to, to the food web, and they're the construct of life on this planet. I'll never be an apologist for my use of psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, they've been extremely important to, to my life um, and have been central to my spiritual belief system. What few people really understand who are outside of the, the psychedelic uh, uh, experience is that it is really true that our brains filter out so much stimuli 
And from an evolutionary point of view, that may have been essential because our, we'd have too much information coming in, so we had to par it down to that information that is absolutely essential. Part of the self-preservation is to ignore 95% of the stuff that's out there. You have a person who's observing everything and remembers everything. He can't cross the street because he's fascinated by the green lights, by the cars, by the gravel, by the flies that are over there on the thing, by the fact that a car has a little blinker going. And if he pays attention to everything he saw, he'd be at life's risk to go across a crosswalk, crossing a street. So he learned to turn that off, turn that off, turn that. Watch for the green light, watch where the first step foot goes down there, glance right and left, there's no car coming, and you get across the street safely. You have to ignore 99% of what's around you to be safe, to achieve what you want to achieve. What these things catalyze, letting you get access to those things you've been ignoring or have been denying. There was a mushroom, sad little mushroom. There was a meadow, ready to cry. There was a sparrow, gray little sparrow. There was an eagle, silent and high. And the Lord said, Laugh, children laugh, the Lord said, Laugh, children laugh, the Lord said, Laugh, children laugh, the Lord said, Laugh, laugh, laugh. And the Lord, he said, I created for you a world of joy from out of the blue. And all that is left to complete the joy, just the laugh of a girl and boy, yeah. And there was a garden, a beautiful garden, held in the arms of a world without joy. And then there was laughter, wonderful laughter, for he created a girl and a boy. But psilocybin uh, mimics, uh, it, it is very close to serotonin. It, it becomes a temporary, uh, it becomes a temporary, uh, a temporary neurotransmitter. And in doing so, the floodgates of the senses are open. So you get a lot more information, a lot more stimuli. And I think it's also the transition of the awakening of a child to become an adult. This is a search for the meaning of life. What's death all about? What's in the afterlife? Um, and so I think this is a common practice uh, and theme throughout all cultures. As young men and young women become adults, they seek meaning in their life. And so when I uh, partook of the psilocybin mushrooms for the first times, and then subsequently, I got this very common theme that I never received in any of my other experiences in life. And the common theme that I heard and I experienced was the following. The earth is in trouble. Don't you see? Aren't you aware? I felt the fabric of nature calling out to me with all of these voices saying, wake up, do what you can. You are the leading organism on this planet and you have a responsibility and a destiny. And will you fulfill that destiny in a positive fashion or will you be part of, the, uh, of nature's destruction?